So I'm about to say something that you'll probably never hear out of a storm chaser. And that is I chickened out. And the reason you won't hear that is there's definitely a culture of masculinity, machoism, broism, whatever you want to call it with storm chasing. And it does kind of make sense because, you know, it, it's not for <laughs> the ill-fated or weak of heart. It, uh, it is a dangerous hobby, occupation for very few. And with the likes of the Twister movie, always kind of instilling that sense of competition and, you know, always wanting to one-up some other chaser, you know, get the closest, get the best shot, provide the best science, whatever the case may be. That's just the culture of storm chasing, and it's actually, if anything, it was worse before the movie Twister. Um, famed chaser and photographer Warren Fraidley uh, has mentioned that uh, getting good photos of storms was downright cutthroat, uh, even to the point of sabotage between competitors. Uh, we don't see that nowadays, thankfully, but this whole competitiveness and sort of chest thumping and that whole mentality behind storm chasing, it, uh, why you're not going to see very many people admit to chickening out as I did. And call it a sign of uh, getting old or maturity. I still am trying to figure it out in my head why I did so. And in particular, I'm talking about May 21st, 2024, the day that Greenfield, Iowa was hit by an EF4 tornado cut right through the center of town, destroying a good portion of the town, killing four with one other death, a traveler uh, with another tornado that day. I was positioned on Highway 92, which runs through Greenfield, going east-west. All right, it is May 21st. 2024 and we are out chasing here in central Iowa just to the west of Winterset. We are under a particularly dangerous situation tornado watch that goes until 9 p.m. Right now we're watching a line of storms to our west, one of which has already produced a pretty decent sized tornado near Red Oak. And that is making its way our direction as these move east-northeast uh, and should be here within an hour, maybe an hour and a half. But these storms are booking it. They are moving 50 miles per hour or faster. And so our chase is probably gonna be very limited in duration, but potentially quite significant in severity. I was just uh, west of Winterset kind of the next major town to the east. And I was positioned there, I was laying in wait. Storm motions, as we all knew that day, were gonna be quite fast. Uh, we were expecting 50, 55 mile per hour storms. So not wanting to get on them too early, but also not wanting to get pinned up against the Des Moines metro area, I felt that was a good place to attempt to intercept a storm. And as I was shooting the, uh, I guess you call it B-roll or intro to what would have been this video, I was watching radar and the storms began to congeal and clump together, losing their kind of unique definition. And it just became a long tail of heavy precipitation with multiple tornado warnings. And they were all pointed in my direction. And I was like, you know, this is 
exactly how I planned it. Everything's coming together. We're going to have a great opportunity here. And as I was getting ready to go west towards Greenfield, I don't know what exactly caused me to check it out, but I just held back. And I think a lot of it has to do with the speed of the storms combined with that, what to me looked like was going to be very low visibility. So after just kind of waiting, setting still, seeing the opportunity had passed, I decided a slightly safer approach would be to try to intercept the storm from the south as opposed to the east. I uh, have a less likely chance of, heaven forbid, getting sort of run over, bulldozed by any said tornadoes. And I knew that the tornado was quite strong as it went through Greenfield. Uh, there's certain radar products that convey potential damage and it did not look good. And I used the velocity scan to kind of track the rotation of that storm. Uh, I took 169 north out of Winterset towards Adel and continually looked for a visual, any kind of wall cloud, any clue. Uh, aside from a diminished rain-free area, there wasn't much to tell. And I kind of had to stair-step my way northeast until approaching uh, just south of Grimes, actually. A very peculiar wind came up out of the southwest. Very strong, very sudden, left suddenly. Again, the sky was very featureless. I couldn't make out any detail that would indicate a tornado. Um, but later survey would show that actually a tornado had formed at that point from that same storm, progressed through Johnston, crossed I-35 and then up uh, past Nevada, um, actually pushing a tanker off the road on Highway 30. Now the storms were moving so fast there was no way I was going to get through the, uh, the suburban areas and, and everything to keep with that storm. So I ended up concluding my chase actually in east central Iowa on some other different storms. There really wasn't much to ride home for with those, nothing even worth recording video for. And from then on till now even I'm still questioning why why did I chicken out? That's not like me. If you've seen my videos, I'm not afraid to get close. under the right circumstances and this obviously was not a right circumstance and I say this by no means am I asking for your pity or remorsefulness or anything like that my situation as a storm chaser means absolutely nothing compared to the impact that it has had on fellow Iowans and I shouldn't say that just because they're fellow islands, but anyone that's impacted by severe weather. You know, me and this channel, I'll give it all up any, any day if we avoid situations like that from happening in the first place. So, but I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts. I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, you know, why haven't I posted a video about those tornadoes, um, especially being so close to home, just a couple counties away. And, uh, well, I didn't get the footage. So, it's been a prolific tornado year. The most prolific since 
2019, and I think we've exceeded even that year. We're above average on total tornado count, but just the, the intensity and the documentation of these tornadoes has been incredible this year. And from Texas to Oklahoma, here in Iowa, even Illinois and Ohio, it's been uh, quite the storm season. But it is starting to wind down. Here now, getting into the middle of June, we only have probably four or five weeks of legitimate storm season left. You know, there's always the, the one-offs, the off-season storms that can occur really any time of the year now. It seems like even December. But yeah, we just got a few more chases left here in the season have a few vacation days left, so we're going to try to make the most of it. Hopefully get a video worth uh, publishing, and just going to have to see what develops, as always. So, with that said, chase on, my friends.